Hey everyone, how's it going? <laughs> Late morning. Anyway, just wanted to make a video. I tore down another pediment. This one's going to be for the other window. But I have to strip these down to be able to cut this all in individual pieces so I can get it to fit right. Looks like I did with that one. So, what I have to do is I have to pick which side is going to be the best to do that on. But uh, before I even do that, I have to tear everything off. I wanted to give you a thought of how to do that. So, I think I've shown that in another video. I'm not sure. I got to tear this one apart too. But, basically you take this piece out. It's usually held by either two nails or one nail over here and one at the bottom. And once you take that out, you can take a hammer where this piece would normally be and pound the top off. And you do that to both sides. This side's going to be a little hard because it's cut off. But you do that to both sides and eventually work this top off from the back. From the, the back here where you're going to see kind of a split. And that'll loosen up all the nails. And then you get the top that looks like this. You see, you get some big nails in there. Takes a while to get it off, but I mean, it's worth it. And when you're taking this off, it also takes the nails from the top of the crown molding out too. Pulls those out. So, after you get that out, you can pull the bottom nails. Pretty easy. You can get up underneath it on the, on the back side and pry a bit on it. A little bit at a time, all the way down, until you get the whole piece loose and you won't break anything. The uh, bottom piece, which is this piece, the, that's the crown. This is the bottom piece, and this is the bottom crown. I don't know what you call it. Base trim, I guess. And uh, the one that was up there, it was nailed two ways. So it had a nail coming up from the bottom, going this way, then it had one from the back going up. <laughs> that was an absolute pain to... to to get rid of, or not get rid of, but pull it off on the leather one. These look like they're just nailed from the bottom, which makes it easy. I can remove this lower trim piece and get a, a uh, putty knife in there, like that one, that one, and uh, get a screwdriver or something and pry a little bit or a uh, chisel and pry a little bit. And that will get that piece off much the same way as this one except you're not hammering it off. You could hammer it off I suppose. You could take the you could take the this and put it in in the groove and then use that that as the buffer between the hammer and the and the wood. This piece of trim I can usually get off with just my hands or just a very little prying because it is a beefier piece of trim and it it uh, comes out pretty easily. They don't have very long nails in it. But yeah, I think there's one, two, three, four, five, six. And then we have a little molding in the front, seven. There's seven pieces or seven elements to this to each pediment. And then you got like 12 to 15 pieces if you include all the returns on everything. And then you re return here and the dental molding and all that. So that's, that's interesting too. There, you're asking how am I going to cut this one down. I'll go out there with my saw. And this side looks like it got cracked when it got removed at the whatever house this was in. Some of these they were pretty hard on. 
Like this one has a big old crack in it here. This one's like missing half of it. So that one's, I'm probably gonna have to do much like I did with uh, that one where I had a filler piece in the bottom of it. This one, I'll go above this door. It's actually sized right for that. And then I'll have to cut this one. Or no, maybe this one I'll put, no, it was this one, sorry. This one's going the one above the door because I got to cut like three inches off of it. So I'll have to adjust this piece down three inches. That one I'll cut down because I can cut it down and make it fit the other window. And still have enough re enough molding to make the the return on this end on both on everything, including the top. Well, this is kind of where I'm at right now. But yeah, every piece has to be cut separately. You can't you can't just take a saw and cut it. Because you'll end up with like this, where everything just cuts straight off. And you won't have the nice return like that on there. And the only way to, to, to return it is by taking everything apart to, uh, to get enough molding to return the edge. Plus, if you just cut it straight, you'd end up cutting this piece, even if you could get enough molding here. You'd cut this piece, which... You need it to extend over quite a bit, and you'd cut this piece, which you need to extend. So if I can stress, definitely just measure it. What I've been doing is measuring the from this point to the bottom point, and then measuring that up here, and that'll give me a uh, listing here. So you leave three sixteenths on either side. And then you, uh, actually it's probably going to be more like quarter inch because of the hinges. And then you measure that and then you measure the opening. And then that'll give me that piece. And then you just replicate each side with the return edge here. So create that little cut there, create that cut, and create that cut. So you just basically add that much to the end of it. Well, anyway, time for bed, and I'll upload this while I'm sleeping, but this will work out good, and when you pull these apart, just pull with the, the way the nails are. So, like this trim was nailed down straight, <clears throat> so you're going to want to get underneath it and pry it up, basically, this way. This one, this one just pops off, but it's nailed straight down too, so you can pop that off. This one, like I said, you take the hammer and pound it out. This one, like I said, pop the top off, and then pry this one up because it's been nailed that way and then that way. The dental molding is just using basically tacks holding that on. And it comes up really pretty easily with just a putty knife. Anyway, just wanted to give you an overview of that. Show you how it's done. It's tricky cuts. Or it can be if you're not used to cutting 45s on crown. But, you know, you got a chop saw, you can do it. Now, heck, you could do this with, with a miter box. You can get those at the store and just hand saw it if you really wanted to. But anyway, I'm just rambling on. I'll rate, comment, and subscribe, and I'll talk with you later.